So this is the new Plunder Storm. It's the Rathi Basin. Or Rathi Highlands, I mean. Plunder Storm, okay. Magic. Cool. Oh, whoa. That's cool. I did the same thing in Fortnite. Oh, yeah, you get new rewards, too, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. The plunder and adventure's about to begin. Okay. All right. So they made a longer term video for it and we'll watch that. I do think this is the kind of stuff that Blizzard does need to do, but it probably took them too long to get this out. But at least it's out now. So this is the video they put out. Uh, I guess this is them talking about the game. Let's take a look at it. Here we go. Get ready for the plunder storm. Ooh. Hey everyone, welcome to Wildcats. Ninja. It's a very Ninja. exciting topic today. And with me, I have two special guests. Hi, I'm Orlando Salvatore. I'm a lead software engineer on WoW. Hi, uh, Bethany, happy to be here. I'm Jeremy Fiesel. I'm associate game director on WoW. So, what I think that's the that guy with the green hair that made pet battles. So when we were thinking about what we wanted to deliver to the players in 2024, what we mm -hmm. ended up landing on was that we wanted to do something a little bit different than the things that we did previously in Dragonflight. So that's what we're here yeah. to talk about today. Good. It's a brand new event, and we're calling it Plunderstorm. Okay. It is a pirate-themed, battle royale-inspired event that takes place uh -huh. entirely within World of Warcraft and is available for all active WoW subscribers. That's that crazy. Said, what do we feel like is like... That's a actually a very good decision, that, like, you don't have to have Dragonflight in order to play this. Hopefully get, like, you know, classic players to try that, too. Three sentences that encapsulates the coolest parts about it. So, Thunderstorm is mm -hmm. World of Warcraft's take on a battle royale. It's an action-oriented game that lets you customize your build and basically your class every single match. You'll be able to start collecting abilities through chests and by killing monsters, even killing other players, <laughs> all while trying to avoid a collapsing storm that is pushing players together. That's, I don't Whoever think anybody's done that before. the last team standing ends up winning. And uh -huh. you don't need to go through a quest line, you don't need to go through any previous content to be able to access this. This is immediately accessible for anybody who's an active WoW player. Cool. We expect even the most casual player to be getting tons of plunder and tons of rewards every day. Yeah, Maybe what do they get? The, the first minute or two are really a little bit more on the PvE side of things, where you're out fighting monsters, you're collecting a new set of mm -hmm. abilities, and there isn't a huge amount of PvP combat until later on in the match. And I think it's important that that's like the core of the game is the plundering, getting out and collecting chests and collecting items. You don't have to be the last person standing on the map in order to get a whole bunch of rewards. Even just by dropping into the map and completing your starter quest, it gives you a bunch of rewards just for doing the usual things you would do for the first couple of minutes. Okay. So no matter what, you should exit that map with a bunch of plunder, even if you're not the last person standing. That's so good. So as we were thinking about what the best framework for this would be, it just came to us that, hey, it should actually be a, an event that feels like it's a little bit outside of the main system. So we talked and we riffed about, hey, what would be the best theme for an event like that? We landed on pirates. <laughs> who, loves, who doesn't love pirates? Because who doesn't love pirates? It's a I fun theme. But also there's all these different pirate crews around Azeroth. Uh, I think that they could do it with a lot of different things. Like they could do it with dwarven clans, like of gladiator stuff, orcs and, and humans. you got to ask yeah. yourself the question, if you're not the hero of Azeroth, right. what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis? That's so, a great question. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna actually track some of our civilian NPC friends and play as those characters as one of the pirate crews within Azeroth that isn't the hero of Azeroth. Okay. All of that came together to give us this theme of Kegleg's crew and the pirate crew <laughs> plundering these relics that are being transported across the highlands. 
What will players see when they jump into this new event? When players enter this new event, uh, they're going to notice that a lot of their core th things that they're used to in World of Warcraft are different. When Good. they get into the main menu, they'll have a brand new option available to them, which is the Plunderstorm button. They click on that. that wow. Takes them to a separate menu. Holy shit. So character. this is like a whole new thing. Look at this. Wow. They put a lot of work into this. And their friends list. And they'll be able to invite players to their party right. all through the main menu. Normally, you need to go into the game to invite another player into your party. But mm -hmm. through Plunderstorm, you're actually inviting them through the main menu. Yeah. Once you're partied up, or if you want to go I mean, in... this is, every game has that, but it's solo, just good. You queue up, load into a match. Mm -hmm. When you load into a match, you kill you'll the chicken. That you're invited into Drop a cheese. Main lobby area where you're able to try out new abilities and try out different mechanics that exist within Plunderstorm. So one of the coolest things about designing Plunderstorm has been just figuring out where we can break the rules in World of Warcraft. TLDR, when you're thinking about changing up things that dramatically, it no longer made a huge amount of sense for your main character and everything associated with that character. All of your armor sets and all of your the weapons and everything that you've collected over the years and your battle pets and your 36 different abilities <laughs> doesn't necessarily translate directly into this game, but we wanted to start. It's a great point. It's a very good point. Yeah, true. Fresh. And they know. Crazy new abilities. Yeah. So, as Jeremy mentioned, there's going to be brand new abilities that normally you wouldn't see on classes or mm -hmm. characters in there. Because when you're thinking about developing a warrior ability, you want it to feel very warrior-esque. Or you're sure. developing a mage ability, you want it to feel mage-esque. Well, with this, you don't have a class. You're actually mm -hmm. going to be building a brand new kit every single time you're going into a match. And your builds may vary match to match because it all depends on what drops for you in the match. Okay, Even cool. Things like auto attack doesn't work like how it works normally in WoW. It's going to be an active ability that you're constantly using to so it's like a MOBA. Uh, enemies. One thing that's just baked into your experience is that you're going to have a health pot that's always persistent. And we've slimmed down the UI um, compared to what World of Warcraft normally is. You may be used to the 12 buttons. It's a great idea. It's smart. Yeah. Wonder why. It's on your main action bar. Yeah. You have a bunch of other action bars yes. you can enable. Well, this actually only has seven total buttons that you can press on in the yes. action bar. When you loot an item, it doesn't go to your bag. You don't have a separate frame that you're opening. Everything gets put directly onto your action bars. And then from there, that's also your spells. So you're able to cast spells, drop abilities, pick up abilities, all to one singular action bar without needing to manage anything else. So we've really... I'm very happy right now. I'm very happy. Really streamlined and simplified the experience. That whole thing, I think, ends up feeling mm -hmm. just wildly different than the way World of Warcraft plays right now. Not only is it action-oriented yeah. combat, but you're grabbing your abilities from the ground and then putting them on your yeah. bar. You can swap the four different abilities as you find new and cool things or that you find certain synergies that right. work really well together. And then there's different rarities to the abilities, too. So you can get everything from uncommon, rare, all the way up to epic levels of right. these abilities. You get higher level abilities as you progress in the match. But you may also just get one really early in the match, get super lucked out, yeah. and you get epic fire world. <laughs> right at the very beginning and then you can go and wreck some people yeah. and that's one of the things I think that makes it super replayable not only do you get a kit of abilities that are always going to feel different in every match but also how the power curve changes is also going to feel pretty different every match too uh-huh yeah you know we've experimented around with a lot of different spells and abilities things that normally we couldn't do in World of Warcraft and that's intentional as well we want to make sure that when when we're coming up with these brand new abilities that they feel fresh they feel awesome to press. It's not just about the min-max. Somebody says this is disguised as a minigame, but it's actually testing feedback and changes for the real game. I fucking hope so. Because this is what the main game has needed for such a long time. This is it. Thank God. Let's cope? I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But sometimes it's about the, the impact. The, oh man, I'm using an ability and this mm -hmm. is just the most awesome ability I've ever seen. Sure. That's the type of stuff we want to inspire players to kind of jump into the next match and find even more cool stuff. And you can strategize. One of the reasons why I like playing duos is because it almost feels like you get twice as many abilities oh, and true. you can strategize. You're going to be the fire pirate and I'm going to be the arcanosphere pirate. So do solo players and duo players play together? So the way it works is uh, we have all duos in a match and all solos in a match. Duo Good decision. Duos, you can also, 
you know, preform a party with a friend. Just, that's a good decision. To yeah. Get into the match with them as well. Yeah. I think that it would end up being a little unfair to mm -hmm. have solo players on the battlefield with duo players because yeah. duo I think that they should allow people to queue into duos as solo players if they want to. Like, you should be able to, you know how, like, for example, like in, in COD, you were able to, like, solo queue squads? You can? Okay, then, yeah, there you go. Players have our coordinating, they're coordinating their spells and abilities. We made it really easy to use the ping mm -hmm. system in-game so that it's really easy for you to communicate even if you're not talking with your partner. Um, so they would already have an advantage and we wouldn't want to disadvantage our solo player like that. I think that duos also has the revive mechanic too, which is super uh -huh. cool, especially if you're a player that dies first, like I tend to. <laughs> yeah. uh, Me too. We shouldn't be on the same team. <laughs> well, a lot of players hate it. I'll look at it in a moment. So if your partner dies, uh, you are able to revive them, but you're not, able, you're not reviving them the normal way you would revive a player in wow you're just giving them drunk extra okay. buttons or collect any spells that or items that do this this is actually just something that is kind of baked into the experience that if you die you'll have a ring around you your partner can stand on you and then you'll get revived and able to play the game again normally in world of warcraft when your character dies you're looking mm -hmm. at your character's corpse mm -hmm. and seeing a release button on there well with plunderstorm we knew that we wouldn't be able to release so what are you going to be doing looking at your corpse the whole time well the engineers you know got together and they decided hey Let's add spectating mode to this. So wow. once you die, uh, you can actually spectate your teammate until you're either revived or unfortunately cool. you're eliminated. And then once your team is eliminated, you can spectate anybody on the entire map. That's, so we want to really yeah, make sure cool. that we're kind of introducing new things in WoW that normally wouldn't exist in, you know, Dragonflight or yeah, sure. Classic or another I get that. of WoW. And make this pretty unique to Plunderstorm. There's other things that we kind of broke the rules on too, which was there's no fall damage. Mm -hmm. uh, and everyone can double jump. Everyone can double <laughs> jump. Double and jump. Just things that we thought were fun. Yeah, yeah that's and awesome. These are things. That's crazy. So they just decided to try to make the game mode fun. Wow. I've. Whoa. Who thought of this? That you we can't do in World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's intentional because that's built around a very different experience. But here mm -hmm. we said, well, we love WoW's mm -hmm. combat, but we want to change up how you interact with WoW's combat. And we yeah. wanted to not only make it different for fighting other players, but also fighting monsters. All the monsters have a different type of abilities that they're going to be able to attack you with. Uh, these aren't your normal just auto attack abilities whenever a mob you know, gets on you. Um, these are going to be actually telegraphed abilities that you're going to see. So these are going to be actually telegraphed. <laughs> Unlike the raid mechanics, which are like, you know, five different versions of red, and so you don't really know what's going to happen. Yeah, these are actually telegraphed. Okay, that's great. Yeah, this is this is good to see. You know, cast in front of the monster and be able to sidestep it. Okay. So there's actual mechanics tied to all of the monsters that are in the Opulence. Well. Mm -hmm. Like Everything has become kind of more action-oriented combat, and that's one of the things we can accomplish when it's all encapsulated within an event. Mm -hmm. On top of that, I, I think a really cool part of this mode is that there's multiple layers of how you play it. So there's not only the spell acquisition, which we talked yeah. about, uh, but also your leveling through this experience mm -hmm. as well. You're getting more uh, health, and you want to get that so that you hopefully by the end of the match have enough level under your belt and enough items under your belt that you can come out on top. I want to know what rewards can I get. Is this like a battle pass or something? I'm a huge collector, and there's got to be something cool. It's plunder after all. Oh yeah, no, we've got a ton of rewards, a ton of couple intentionally <laughs> pirate-themed rewards coming your way in plunder. Uh huh. Uh, there's 40 renown levels that you can get with keg legs. Group, Great. Which seems like a lot, but you're gonna zip through them pretty quickly. We want this to feel super, super rewarding. So expect to get a renown level, you know, every four or five matches, at least a renown level a day for even your casual gamer. Every renown level that you level up has a reward associated with it. Everything that you unlock. I mean, these look nice. In this mode is also going to unlock. In I mean, this is a really cool looking transmog. That looks awesome. Yeah, that looks really cool. Transmog set for all of your main World of Warcraft characters. And then there's a couple of classic rewards in there as well. If you're a World of Warcraft classic player, you can get a pet and a mount from this. Is there anything you're doing to make plenty? I don't know if a mount like that fits in the classic WoW. I feel like that's way too much personally. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm just being stupid. But I, I think that's way too much for classic WoW you're doing to make plunders from fair for all players. oh for wrath oh uh, yeah who cares yeah, at that point yeah who cares to support add-ons or try to put the majority of the information players were looking for in the <laughs> game world and in the mode yeah you know world of warcraft players are some of the smartest players in the world and we're super excited for our players to check this out one thing that we knew though is that we wanted a level playing field for all players to be able to play with uh third priority add-ons are awesome and they're super cool to wait see wait one second to check this out 
One thing that we knew though is that we wanted a level playing field for all players to be able to play with. Uh, third party add-ons are awesome and they're super, super cool to see and what the community comes up with is amazing. But for this, we really wanted everybody to have the same exact experience, uh, which also made it challenging to make the event as well because we need to make everything super obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're casting spells or you're attacking enemies, those things, you know, we won't have any assistance from any other add-ons, so we may need to make the game really streamlined and uh, approachable in that way. We've really spent extra time iterating on the UI and the UX, the visual. So there's no add-ons? What a great idea. Yep. Wow. How about that? Little effects in game to make sure everything is as clear as possible. Is mm -hmm. Plunderstorm a reoccurring event? You know, we're really looking forward to seeing what players think of this event. It's a brand new thing for us. It's super unique and cool and different. Yeah. And depending on player feedback, we will see what the future of Plunderstorm looks like. We would love to bring it back in some form. If you like Plunderstorm, you know, please get on the forums, please get on mm -hmm. social media. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you would like to see in a future iteration of it. I think importantly, now that we've got all this great backbone tech. Somebody asked, why is it only an event? The reason why it's only an event is because they need to release it and then figure out how it's good and how it's bad. And then after they do that, they're gonna fix it. Cause like, I bet whenever I play it, it's gonna suck in some ways. And so they're gonna have to make it better. It's testing, like it's just, it's just a smart thing to do. Set up for creating these sort of in-game events. We can definitely look forward to making more in the future. So let us know what you think. Feedback is super important for us. It's actually something that we take very seriously, not only um, externally, but also internally. And we wanna make sure this is a fun experience. So just like Jeremy said, get on the forums, get on social media, let us uh -huh. know what you think. I am so excited to play Plunderstorm, and I'm sure all of you are as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Bethany. It was great to be here, and we will see you, you in, in the Plunderstorm. Plunder <laughs> oh my gosh, see all right. you guys next time. <laughs> so what do I think about this? I actually think that this seems quite promising and pretty good. Like, I, I, I haven't played it yet. So I, I don't really know this, but like the premise of this and the goals that they have, this is a huge W. Because if you think about all the things that I've been talking about with WoW for the last like years, the main things are the game's too fucking complicated. There's too many buttons. There are too many things happening at the same time. You need to have a million different add-ons to play the game effectively. And this solves literally every single one of those problems. That's crazy. Yeah, that's actually really good. Uh, three button dungeons. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. The chances are the X spell break devs help. That's why it's fun. Well, yeah, because they acquired, I think the studio was called Proletariat about two years ago. So World of Warcraft players are some of the smartest players in the world. I mean, some of them are. It's just not most of them. Biggest mistake in this revealing is the sneaky bush. Now everyone will be aware of it. That's actually a good point. Uh, how could it be that they have a spectator mode in raid fights whenever you die? Uh, don't forget to greet the boss driver. Don't know if this will be good. Meeting of suits. Here's an idea. My kid loves the Fortnite game. Can we make WoW do that? Yeah. I mean, I remember I said they should have done this, like, what? Fucking, like, five years ago or something like that in BFA. So I'm glad that they're finally doing it. This is something that probably should have happened a long time ago, but I'm just glad that it's happening now. Plunderstorm sounds more like your current business model. Uh, hopefully they're using this to test new tech for the game overall. Yeah, exactly. Holy shit. You know, they just canceled the game they had in development. There's nothing new coming from Blizzard in the next few years. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll look at players from Smart World. We make everything super obvious. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, this is the dude that made Island Expeditions. Keep that in mind. Island expeditions were good. The reason why island expeditions were bad was because you had to do them. And they never got iterated on or improved. So, like, whenever the game first came out, island expeditions were fine. It's the same as Torghast. So, like, Blizzard had this problem where they took new content and they made players have to do it. And because players had to do it, then people hated it. But if Torghast was optional from the beginning, if islands were optional from the beginning, they weren't the best way to get Azerite, nobody would have had this problem that they had. So, like, it really wasn't the content itself, because it's the same as, like, pet battles, right? Some people like them, some people don't. But you don't need to do pet battles in order to do the raid. So who cares? And people can just be like, ah, it is what it is. Like, Mage Tower, yeah, yeah. And so that's really what the problem was. 
Uh, Dies of Cringe, what is this? World in the mode. Yeah, you know, World of Warcraft players are some of the smartest players in the world, and we're... I get it. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, the content no one asked for, landlock pirates with no boats. Well, this is a good start. They made PvP less sweaty. Sounds good. Yeah, because nobody can get into WoW PvP nowadays. Like, it's insane. Are we sure WoW can even support 60 people on the same map? Uh, yeah, of course they can, because there's not 17 different calculations happening every fraction of a second. So, did not expect this. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's look at how people are responding to this on the subreddit. A profit from 2018. You know what? This is what happened ever Blizzard taking her sweet time to release the game instead of hitting whenever it's hot. By the time Blizzard releases Heroes of the Storm, the MOBA genre is pretty much declining. Now, the Battle Royale uh, latest, hot, hottest and popular genre, I don't see Blizzard doing anything to eat that pie. I guess they most likely are busy trying to reinvent the wheel. By the time they came out with a new, unique Battle Royale Blizzard game, most likely Battle Royale fad has died off, and Blizzard is only at the starting line. Oh my god. Well, they're not happy about that. Are people hyped for it? Well, let's read and see. Okay, but consider this. What's this? A Battle Royale in Warcraft. This was five years ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember I was saying that they should do this too. Like, I remember I used Duratar as an example. Actually, let me actually read some of the comments about this. I do think that they're right that Blizzard moves too slow on stuff. They're definitely right about that. Is it only a three-week event? Well, it's a three-week event, but they... I mean, like, they've clearly invested a lot of time and money into doing this. So you can expect to see more things like this happen in the game in the future. Crazy thought, you guys don't have to play the new Battle Royale. The amount of negativity surrounding this is just silly. Well, he, do you want to know why there's a lot of negativity surrounding this? I'm going to explain why. The reason why is because the only people that are left playing WoW are the really hardcore players that are super dedicated. And the game has turned into a sweaty lobby simulator. And because it's turned into a sweaty lobby simulator, well, guess what happens? Whenever you bring in casual content to the game, they're mad about it because that's not what they're for. B WoW has done a great job at alienating every type of player except for the super sweaties. The amount of negativity surrounding it in my circles, the rewards are grindy as fucked again. It's only lasting six weeks, so you need to grind for it. Yeah, they should probably make one level is like one game is one renown level. Like, I think that's very fair. And if you win, it's like three. Like, I, 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 I don't know why you'd make it 150. Yeah, four to five is one. Like, that's crazy. Uh, but I don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, name a more whiny player, uh, player base than WoW players. I'll wait. I don't like this. Um... I don't like the idea that, like, because WoW players cry about things, that they're automatically wrong for the things that they're crying about. Uh, no, I think actually WoW players do know what they want, and there has been a lot of positive feedback for a lot of things. Like, for example, dragon riding. People have been pretty much universally positive about dragon riding. People were universally positive about the questing experience in Dragonflight. Uh, people were pretty much universally positive about the different world events that happened. Uh, people were universally positive about... Let me think. Uh, I would say, like, oh, no, that's probably not a good example. Uh, solo Shuffle. Yeah, well, no, that created other problems. But yeah, Season of Discovery. I think people are generally happy about Season of Discovery. Like, the talent system. Talent system is great, yeah. Like, I feel like this, I, I feel like this isn't really true. This is something that, like, WoW defenders say in order to, like, invalidate actual complaints or concerns that people have. Yeah, a lot of WoW players were, like, really happy about a lot of stuff. Feels like more of a fun addition than a hardcore mode aimed at hardcore players. Yeah, exactly. Hardcore players have difficulty realizing not everything in the game is aimed for them. Yeah, and the thing is that, like, hardcore players need casual players to exist. Because a lot of hardcore players only play the game because they want to get recognized for being hardcore. So, like, the moment that a game dies and people, like, that's why, for example, like, whenever there isn't a big player base in, like, a free-to-play, like, pay-to-win game then the whales stop playing too, because whales need plankton to eat. And if the whales don't have the plankton, then they go extinct. And the same thing happens in the games like this, is that if you don't have a culture that's built around like rewarding and looking up to the people that are like really serious and like really good at the game, what you're gonna have is the serious people that are really good at the game, that percentage is gonna get smaller and smaller over time, and it's gonna eventually go away. Whales need to be elites? Yeah. 
Uh, but no elites are there whenever there's no peasants to look down on. Yeah, it's that simple. Uh, Blizzard's launching an MMO spinoff of their RTS seven years after Ultimate Online came out. It'll never sell. Um, I don't think that anybody really thought that. Uh, and, and also, like, so the big reason why why this happened is because people weren't playing Ultima Online anymore. Like, people are still playing Fortnite. It's kind of a bad example. It's a bad example in, like, five different ways. Uh, in what world have BR games died off? Fortnite, Warzone, PUBG are some of the most popular games in the world. BRs are massively popular. Like, if I pull this up and I look at it, um, this is a BR, this is a BR, and then this one is. So, like, some of the top games are all Battle Royales. So, like, how, how are we really going to say this is, like, a dead genre? People like Battle Royales, and also another reason why people like them is because they're easy to get into and easy to get, get out of. Like, they're very fast, and you don't need to have, like, a lot of prior knowledge in the game. Jump in, jump out. Yeah, it's that simple. Battle Royale is brain rot? Really? Because I really like Battle Royale games. I think they're really fun. Yeah, I, I don't know where, like, I, I feel like this is, like, one of those things where it's the popular thing, so people dislike it. Uh, my personality is not disliking popular things, okay, guys? I, I like I like Fortnite. I think Fortnite's a great game. I think PUBG is a great game. I think uh, Warzone was a great game. I don't know how it is now. Yeah, I, I think it's great. It's, like, people are just, like, are, uh, like, kind of reflexively against it because it's popular amongst, like, kids, and they're, like, 29, and so they're, like, oh, I can't like this anymore. Uh, I'm still upset about Heroes of the Storm. That was a fun game they abandoned way too early. No, Heroes... Like, everybody says this about Heroes of the Storm, but the truth is that Heroes of the Storm was a completely dead game and nobody was playing it. And before somebody says, I was, like, who cares about you? Like, there's, like, millions of people out there that aren't. Like, and you look at how big, like, League of Legends is and how big Dota was, Heroes of the Storm wasn't even growing. Like, it wasn't gonna pop off. Like, it, that was it. The MOBA scene is dead. Like, League and, and Dota are the MOBA games. Until somebody totally reinvents what a MOBA is, it's not going to happen. Just play Dota 2. Yeah, exactly. Dota is big. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, it was big then, and, and yeah, it is still big. I couldn't get into BR until I tried Naraka Blade Point. Yeah, that's a pretty popular game. Uh, let's see here. All time, I'm one of the all-time worst PvPers ever, so I'm going to apologize preemptively to whoever's unfortunate enough to match with me. Nice trailer. I have no idea what it means. Not interested in this at all. Very cool to see Blizzard try new things. Yeah, this is a great... That's a great thing to say. Yeah, I, I think this is awesome that they're adding stuff like this. Expel Break Devs is something to do with this. Of all things, this is not it. PC Gamer article. They talked to Blizzard. Each one of the 40 renowned levels. I want to try something new, but it's not my cup of tea. Yeah, I mean, this actually seems like a lot of people are kind of positive about it. Yeah, I was expecting way more negativity. But this is actually pretty good. Holy shit. Yeah, there it is. But isn't BR bad? Yeah. Spellbreak was shit? Yeah, I never played the game. I'm not sure about that. YouTube is mostly negative, like 80% dislike ratio. YouTube is? Yeah, but like YouTube is... Like most YouTube commenters make comments before they even watch the video. It's amazing how out of touch you guys are. It's like eight years too late. I'm excited to play it tomorrow. Lack of damage that Guild Wars 2 with an action bar. Definitely built for console players to drive new players to retail eventually. Well, like, isn't that a good thing? Yeah, like, I... I'm gonna be honest. Like, I think that's what they should be doing. Yeah, like, they, they should be doing that. All Track Valley was a form of BR? Uh, not really, but yeah. Did you hear the rumors from early testers that Diablo 4 Season 4 is going to be massively improving the game? Oh, for sure. They're going to fix it. Checks the Twitch category for how many people are playing. Well, you know, uh, I'd say this is really good. Like, everybody's playing the game. Everybody's trying it out. Holy shit. Yeah, it's not out on EU. Yeah. Well, that would probably, to be fair, I would probably increase the viewership. And so, uh, why am I on the section? Because I'm going to play it. That's why. It's all a Wrathy? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely... I'm, I'm about to try it out. Like, I'm just... I'm, I'm reading some of the comments and everything. I'll look at, like, what people are saying about it on Wowhead. 
and then go from there. Okay, let's see here. All Plunderstorm. List of Plunderstorm rewards. Where is it? Plunderstorm merch. Pets and mount rewards. Let's see. So what do they give you? So this is from Wrath. And so they give you this little uh, this little crab. And then you also get a, a parrot mount. That's pretty cool. Okay. New faction meta achievements. That's a pretty cool looking mount too. Okay, Dragonflight meta expansion. Ponderstorm interviews. I want to make sure that I get this here. How to play it. Okay, this is the main this is the main post. Okay, so what did people in the comments say? 300 comments. What in the question mark? PVP pog. This actually sounds awesome. What the fuck? Who asked for this? Who thought this was a good idea? I did. Like, I, I, I want to give, like, before I even try it out, I'm going to give my opinion on it. And, like, on on what I think of, like, the, the concept of it, right? Like, obviously, I don't know if it's good or not because I haven't tried it out. But, like, for the concept of it, I think this is an incredibly great idea. And Blizzard should have done this five years ago. The biggest problem with Retail WoW right now is that it's too complex and there's too much going on. This solves every one of my problems. Like, if I were to look at, like, think about it like this. Um, uh, problems I have with WoW. Um, too complicated. Um, uh... Item, bloat, everything, bloat, uh, add-ons, too many spells, hard to understand, telegraphs. This solves every one of those problems. Oh, another one. It solves every single problem. So yeah, I think this is huge. As much just getting uh, getting old, guys. This is uh, this all started when he couldn't get the sword. Let's be honest. Do you think that's it? Yeah. Before I try it out, I'm gonna give my opinion on it. God, I love this guy. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm giving my opinion on like the idea of doing it. Like I don't know whether the concept is actually like. So basically, there are a lot of things that are really good in practice, or sorry, really good in concept, but bad in practice. What I'm saying is that I'm talking about the concept of it. I massively support the concept of it. And I think that WoW needs to go more in this direction in a general level. It needs to be more like this overall. Or rather, they execute the concept poorly. Yeah, there's a lot of concepts that Blizzard tries to do, and they do them poorly. Like, for example, I think Torghast. Torghast was a great concept done poorly. Um, Island Expeditions. Great concept, poor execution. So, I, and I can go back and talk about the positives with Island Expeditions, or the positives with Torghast. Now, is that the problem with the content fundamentally? No. But that's it. Torghast was not poorly, it was horribly done. Uh, yeah, basically, Warfronts. Warf yes! Warfronts were the best example. Dude, I remember I was so fucking excited. Dude, the moment that in the 2018 or 17, I forgot which one, BlizzCon, they announced Warfronts. And that, bro, the moment they brought up the talent tree and the tech tree from Warcraft 2, I was like, oh, yes. Oh, like, I was so fucking excited. I'll be right back. I gotta take a piss. I was watching too complicated, maybe because you're always getting carried. With too many abilities, too much shit going on. It's hard to get into. It's just too much. It's way too much. Too complicated for new players? Yeah. You think it's too complicated for me? Fuck no, it's a joke. It's a baby game for idiots. You literally just sit there and listen to DBM tell you what to do. <laughs> the fuck? No, it's not hard. I'm talking about, like, I'm talking about new players, average people. 